Hi, I'm Anna Ingleby from Indigo Moon Theatre. I would have been performing at the Live Beverly Puppet Festival 2020 with Saraswati, my dancing marionette or Kapputli from Rajasthan. I've been performing with her since 1991. I named her after the goddess of art and learning, knowledge, music and wisdom. In my performance, Saraswati is later scared by a cobra, but she soon realises that things which scare us can inspire the dance. Our festival theme is back to nature. Like the mountains, we need to be resilient. Like the birds, we must overcome our fears to reach our full potential. Like the water molecules in the oceans, we humans are all just small parts of the greater whole. And perhaps respect for nature is the most important of all to prevent further crisis. Instead, today, I'm going to show you how to make two very simple Kadputli string puppets of your own. One of them is very simple, devised by the late Pat Brennan. The other one has moving hips, a modified version by myself. Both of these are very accessible. They're designed to be easily made quite quickly. However, the more time you put in, or if you decide to stitch instead of glue, the better your results will be. Hope you have lots of fun. Katputli is the name for the vibrant and colourful puppets from Rajasthan in India. They are believed to have started about 1500 years ago. Kat means wood and putli means doll. They are carved out of wood by hand, combined with cloth and operated with strings, simply around the fingers. Traditionally, they are held in the feet when carved, but please don't try that at home. Beautiful puppets were created using recycled fabric to decorate them and always with very big and bold eyes. It's not possible to teach wood carving in this video right now, so instead we will make adapted cloth versions. But here are some examples of Kat Putli from Indigo Moon Theatre's collection to give you more ideas. You might even think of your own way of making other puppets using the leftover bits of plastic bottle. This drummer came from Shadipur Depot in New Delhi in 1991. Just one string between his head and his hands allows him to sit up straight and beat his drum. And this one, acquired more recently, is still made in a similar way. Tales were told of bravery, love and happiness based on the lives of their kings and brave soldiers. They would glorify them and sing their praises to the people of faraway places. The puppeteers would both entertain and educate through their stories and songs. But always there were scenes of dancing and comedy for palace entertainment. These Katputli often have no legs and in this case the puppet changes simply by having a reversible skirt and being turned upside down with strings on each head. To make your own simplest type of Katputli you will need a large square of soft cloth, old saris are perfect, or it could be an unwanted scarf, please ask first though. A smaller rectangle for the veil, a pop sock, ankle high, a snowball size of stuffing from an old pillow, otherwise chopped up sponge or old fabric, fabric scissors, stapler, fabric glue, thin card, a red and black felt pen, a large needle, it needn't be a mattress needle, just as large as you have. Bead thread, kite string or similar. Small scissors for cutting card. Any decorative materials that you can find, including felt, any scrap materials, and any broken or unwanted jewelry. Flowers from outside, if there are any. Lollipop sticks or any stick or pencil of similar length. For the more complex version, as well as the tools, string and decorative materials already mentioned, you will instead need a longer rectangle of cloth, a smaller rectangle of cloth, a thinner strip of cloth, a longer pop sock, knee high, two lumps of stuffing, scissors for cutting plastic and a plastic bottle. You will also need a piece of fabric for the veil or 
For either version, you may prefer to make a male dancing cut putli. If so, you need a thin piece of cloth to make a turban, also known as pagari, and some sellotape to fix the string onto the lollipop stick or pencil. To start the simplest version of a cut putli, start with a large square piece of cloth, approximately 60 centimetres each way. Fold it into four, being careful that the edges are level with each other. One of the corners has the fold in the cloth, and the other diagonally opposite corner has four loose corners. Using some sharp scissors, cut a very tiny snip into the fold in the folded corner, not across it. For the opposite corner, with the four different layers, carefully cut the corners of all four layers at the same time, cutting off as little as possible of the fabric to make a big curve between the other two corners. Unfold the cloth and you will see that you've made a circle with a tiny slit in the middle. This is easier to see sometimes if you hold it up to the light. Take your ankle high pop sock and stuff it with the snowball size lump of stuffing or equivalent. Push the stuffing as far as you can into the sock and then thread it through the little slit in the middle of the cloth. If you have fabric which is better on one side, make sure you thread it from the best side of the fabric. Pull the sock through as far as you can and then tie a knot as close as you can to the fabric. Repeat the knot two or three times, especially if you accidentally cut the slit too big. When turned the other way up, this is the head and body of the dancing puppet. To make the hands, fold a thin piece of card in half. Draw a simple mitten shape. Cut this out and you have made two hands the same shape. You can cut separate fingers if you prefer. Place the hands on the table so that the thumbs are next to each other. Decorate the hands with a red felt tip. I copied the Mendy design, which is made from henna in real life, from Saraswati's hands, which are different on each side. But you can make whatever pattern you like. Decorate both sides of the hands and trim off any unwanted edges. Next, take the veil, which can be a piece of fabric similar in length to the original square or shorter, but about half as wide. If the veil already has a decorative or a tidier edge, pick this long edge for the front of the veil and fold it in half to find where the middle is. Then find the head and put one dab of fabric glue on both the midpoint of the long veil edge and on the top of the head. For best results, wait a few minutes until the glue is semi-dry but still tacky before joining the veil to the head. If at this point you decide to make a male dancer, instead of fixing a veil, you can twist some fabric and glue it around the puppet's head instead. This requires patience to hold it in place while the glue dries. To fix the hands, spread out the skirt or body of the puppet so that it is folded in a flat semicircle with the veil spread out beneath it. Place each hand so that the thumbs are facing the head on each side and position them about half to two thirds of the way between the head and the edge of the skirt on each side. Staple the hands twice on each side between the edge of the veil and the fold of the skirt. I always call this the hand sandwich part. To make the eyes, Find another piece of doubled up card, which might be left over from when you made the hands, if it's big enough. With a black felt tip, draw a big eye, making the edge very thick and the pupil dark, but leaving a tiny circle of white in the middle somewhere to make it more lifelike, as if the light were catching it. Cut this out and draw on the other eye too, then glue to the face. Eyebrows could be made from many different things. Here I have used some sticky backed black foam, but it will stay on more securely if I were to use fabric glue again. Red felt is ideal for lips, but again many other things could be used instead. Hair could be made from all sorts of things too. Wool, fabric, fake fur, 
or whatever you can find. You can even use cardboard packaging coloured with felt tip. I never like to be too prescriptive because it's great to see how everybody's puppets can all look so different. To fix the head string, thread a needle with a piece of bead thread or kite string or any string you can find. Find the biggest needle you have. This mattress needle can go right through the head, but if you don't have such a big needle, you can simply use a small needle to fix the string to itself at each side of the head. Use the same piece of string to go from one side of the head to the other. How long is a piece of string? The length of this string depends on the height of the puppeteer and whether it will be performed on the table or the floor. It's possible that a darning needle might go through the head if you squeeze it. But don't worry, your puppet will recover from this trauma. If in doubt, put the face on later. If your string has gone through the puppet's head, be sure to tie the ends together. To complete the head string, if you like, you can sellotape it to a lollipop stick or pencil, but be sure to put the middle of the string at the midpoint of the stick or pencil. For the hand string, cut a piece of string slightly longer than your head string. This one string will be tied around a hand at each end. You can tie this in any way you wish, but the strongest way is to create a slip knot at each end. First, tie a simple knot near the end of the string. Loop the string round to create a simple fish shape with the knot underneath on the right. Then, take the knot over the body of the fish, over the top and up through the middle to the right of where it went across the fish body. Pull it tight, but keep your fingers inside the loop which you've created. Then pull at the loop so that the first knot meets the other. This has created an adjustable slip knot, a bit like a lasso, which you can then put over the puppet's hand. Pull it tight, but be sure to make this happen on the strong fabric, not the card, which might tear. Do the same the other end of the same string around the other hand. The dancing action is created by holding each string pinched between the fingers. The arm string takes the weight of the puppet when she is dancing with her arm in the air and the level of the head string makes sure that she stays at the right level so that she neither flies nor sinks into the floor. Your puppet is ready to dance, but you may wish to add decoration, not forgetting any flowers if you have any nearby. At this point, you may wish to check that the length of the veil is suitable for your puppet. In this case, the veil was a bit longer than the puppet body, so I trimmed it later, just a bit, to help its movement. Your decorations too may help the movement of your puppet. This old bangle isn't a good shape to hang on the skirt, but could look nice on her head. However, if there were a heavy piece of jewellery to attach to the bottom of her skirt, it would help this marionette to make better use of gravity and for you to know when she is touching the floor. All sorts of things could be cut up and used to decorate your puppet, but be sure to ask first before raiding anyone else's jewellery. Now you can see Saraswati does one of her dance moves in this way, with her main weight supported by her right hamstring and only this string moves up and down, while the head string simply maintains the correct height to create the illusion of her being on the ground and having legs. Your puppet can do the same. If you are right-handed, take the string of the puppet's right hand with your right hand. If you are left-handed, take the string of the puppet's left hand with your left hand. The other hand takes the head string. To make a slightly more complex puppet with torso and moving hips, first take a longer knee-high pop sock. Stuff this with a snowball size of stuffing as before, as far as you can into the sock, except this time tie a knot straight away. Then stuff it with another lump of stuffing and tie another knot. Using some kitchen scissors, cut off the upper section of a large plastic bottle.
trim any jagged edges from the plastic and insert it into the pop sock to become the puppet's hips. If you have no plastic bottle, you can use another lump of stuffing. If you want, you can knot the sock, but later the hip string will secure the bottle inside the sock. To make the skirt, tie a knot at the end of a piece of thread and thread the other end into a needle. You don't need to use a needle as large as this. Take the thread in and out all the way along the long edge of your rectangular skirt cloth. If the fabric is thin like this, more of it is needed to gather up and not be too translucent. In this case, I've made the skirt quite long, making quite a tall puppet. Yours could be shorter if you want. Pull the needle completely through the skirt and then remove the needle safely so that when you find the end of the thread with the knot in it, all of your skirt is hanging from the thread. Tie this around the hips with a good knot so that it hangs from them without falling off. A thicker fabric would disguise the hips more, but be careful not to obstruct the movement of the hips by either tying it too high or by having cloth which is too thick to move well. Spread the fabric all around the hips and glue the two edges to the hips where they meet. To clothe the torso, lay out the smaller rectangular piece of cloth. The neck of your puppet will be placed three quarters of the way along the top of this, so that when it is folded over, the head will be in the middle. Put fabric glue all along the right half of the top edge and down the right hand side. Then, when the puppet is back in its position, Fold the cloth around, pressing the glued edges and allow the glue to dry for a while. Try to maintain right angles at the shoulder corners. If you have thicker fabric, it may be slightly easier for this part. To make the sleeves, take a long thin strip of fabric and fold up one edge. Put fabric glue all along this before folding down the top, trying to roll inside any frayed edges. Press it down and leave the glue to dry a little while. Keep this as one long strip without cutting it because this will become two arms. To fix the sleeves, first fold them in half to find the middle. Put glue along the middle section of the sleeve long enough to then just glue the torso on. Don't forget to staple each shoulder twice because these shoulders will sometimes take the weight of the whole puppet. Please also remember that this is a puppet to be used with care, not a toy for young children. Beware of loose staples. As before, take some card folded double to make hands. Place each hand into the end of each arm with the thumbs facing upwards and staple at least twice. Don't forget that later you can try to find decorative trimmings to cover any messy edges. As before, make the face and attach a veil. Otherwise you may want to create a turban this time, which requires patience again when holding it in position to dry. You might find different ways to create your own style of turban, or a moustache. Once again, sequins or other bright decorations can make your puppet sparkle. The more time you have, the better to make your Bollywood stars. Here's an example of how shiny paper can be used to make a really fun trim for your puppet's clothing. For this version of your cat putley, use the needle to attach the string through one place at the top of the head, then tie it to itself. The string must be long enough to go as high as your hand above the puppet and then back down to its lower back, where you attach the other end in the same way. If your puppet has a veil, make sure this is in the correct position when attaching the string. Be sure to attach this string to the torso, not the hips, and before you put your needle through, make sure the other end of the head string is still threaded.
and don't forget to add hair whenever you want. By pinching this string tightly in two places, between finger and thumb, this puppet can bow like Saraswati. Keep pinching the string, but lower the head string while taking the weight on the back string. It's really one string, but think of it like two strings. Just like the earlier puppet, the hand string is attached in the same way, with one string between the hands, so it can dance in the same way. To attach the hip string, first lay the puppet down flat. Lift up the skirt and with the needle pierce the bottom edge of the plastic hip on the right hand side. Thread one end of your hip string through here and tie it to itself, at the same time securing the hip within the pop sock. Then take the needle and string up through the skirt and down through the skirt on the left hand side. Make sure the upper clothing is arranged properly and if this is long you may wish to take the needle through that too. Do the same with the needle and string at the bottom left side of the hip, being sure to do it exactly opposite the other one, then tie the string to itself again. Pull the skirt down and pull the hip string up to its full length. Find the middle of the string and place this at the midpoint of either a lolly stick or pencil and stick with sellotape. The correct way to hold the hip bar is with your thumb on top of it in the middle and your other fingers underneath. A seesaw action will create the hip movement. While you are doing this action, it is very important that you also hold the head string to keep the puppet upright and at the right height. However, you may want to loop the hamstring round your wrist while you're not using it. Your puppet can do the same hip movement as Saraswati. However, if the hip string is attached further to the front or back rather than the sides, it may take on a slightly different style of dancing. Have lots of fun with your Bollywood stars and let's hope they join Saraswati's cause, combining art, music, knowledge, learning and wisdom and speak out for the respect and rebalance of nature. Have fun everyone!